Hi, today we're going to talk about how to get logged in to our class website and a little bit about the uh, layout of the class. We'll do that in two different videos. But first, let's get you there. So as you can see above me, there is a link. And that's a link to the web server that our department uses to host all of our classes. So we use this for online classes, for hybrid classes, for even fully face-to-face -face classes. And we use something called Moodle. That's kind of a weird word. I get it. Um, maybe you should go look it up because it actually stands for something. All the letters stand for something. So um, see if you can figure out what it is and message me and maybe that will be worth a few bonus points. Uh, message me on Discord. That'd be a good place. Anyhow, so the first thing you need to do is get there. And so I'm going to do a screen share and show you um, how to get there, how to get logged in, and what that's all going to look like. So the first thing you do is when you come to this page, this is what you'll see. And so you'll have all the professors will be listed, the uh, semesters that they're teaching, the um, within the semester there'll be the individual classes, all right? But the first thing you have to do is get logged in. So go up here in the upper right corner and click on the login link, all right? Now, it might be tempting to try to type in a username and password. Don't do that. Don't type in a username and password. Um, we want you to use a Google account because then it ties in everything within Moodle. So you can access your Google Docs, you can access calendars, you can, like, you can access lots of stuff if you connect those accounts. Now, you might be thinking, well, I have a Yahoo email or some other email. I don't have a Google account but your college email is a Google account. So I don't know if you realize that or not, but it is a Google account. And so use that to log in. So I'm gonna click this. I don't actually have a college Google account. So I'm gonna log in with a different Google account. And the first time you do this, or maybe every time you do this, it's gonna ask you to authenticate in. So, you should type in your username and password, click on next, and don't save it if it's on a public account. Depending on how you have your Google set up, um, your account set up, it might ask you to do a two-factor authentication on your phone. Just jump through whatever hoop you need to jump through to take care of that. One of the things once you're in here that's important to do is you'll notice now I'm logged in, right? So I'm gonna go up here and click on my profile. There's just a couple of things to pay attention to here. So I'm gonna edit the profile, make sure all this is good, but the most important thing probably on this entire profile is your time zone, all right? So I believe the default's probably set to LA, that's good, most of us are on the West Coast. But if you happen to be taking this class from somewhere else or if you're visiting somewhere else while you're taking the class, you're gonna to wanna to edit your time zone. This is important because if assignments get launched and there's a due date of let's say midnight and you're uh, set to the Eastern time zone, you don't have the right time zone, that assignment's gonna close at 9 p.m. for you. And so if you show up at 10 p.m. ready to turn it in, it might already be closed. So definitely check your time zone, make sure that's accurate, make sure that's correct. I'm down here in the other fields and these are just fake numbers. I didn't put these, these aren't like real. So, but you should definitely use real numbers. Put in your student ID number, including the zeros, and put in your six digit birth date. Um, that comes into play if we're back on campus and, or you end up being on campus and you use one of the computers um, in the CIS lab, this will let you log into the computer. This will become your username and password to log into the computer. So once you've done all that, update profile, you can add a picture. Um, like I said, this is a different account, so I have to have an icon, but it's really good if you add like a real picture. When we're online especially, it's good to see faces so that we can make those connections. Anyhow, so once you do that, you've got your profile set, you're logged in, click back over to Boss because you're still not quite in the class. There's another step to still get into the class. So I'm going to scroll down here, Debbie Curdy, Summer 2020. Here's the class that I'm looking for. Click on the link. Sometimes it makes you log back in. I don't know why it loops through that once in a while. But here's the link. Now you're still not in the class. 
almost, almost. Down here, now you may or may not see this. The end result is you have to click this Enroll Me button. And you might be thinking, well, that's not even spelled right. When you go look up Moodle, one of the things you'll find out is that it was created in New Zealand. And so some of the prompts are in um, British English and they spell things a little differently, some things. So that's one of those examples. Anyhow, if you don't see anything here, you're good to go. Just click Enroll Me and you're in. However, if there's an enrollment key required, you need to put that in exactly as it was given to you. That's a one-time password. You never have to use it again. It's kind of like um, just making sure you get in the right door, okay? So I'm gonna put that one-time enrollment key. Make sure I spell it right. Okay, so you got that in there. Click Enroll Me. You don't need to save it. You'll never use it again. And boom, you're there. Now, this might pop up a data preference thing, pretty much wanting, you to, wanting to know if you want to save preferences. I always like that, so I'll say yes, but that's up to you. That's all you need to do to log in. If you see this, if you see the name of your class at the top, you're in good shape. Um, the only thing I'm going to remind you of is to make sure you log out when you're done. Moodle will probably automatically log you out, which is a good thing, but especially if you're on a public computer or a shared computer, you wanna make sure to log out of all your accounts. You don't want somebody to sit down 10 minutes after you and be able to get into all of your stuff, right? So make sure you log out. Anyhow, that's the short and sweet version of how to log into Moodle. We'll see you there.